Welcome, welcome to the Arizona Real Estate News Show. It's here where we just try to get you caught up on events that happened the week with Pat McMaster's Price Mortgage, Jackie and Ruby with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. And it looks like summer is uh, starting to end next week. We're, I don't think we're supposed to be over 100. And for people the rest of the country, that's, that's how we view things out here. But this show Thank is sponsored God. again. By Red Hog Media. So if you have any real estate photography needs uh, or if you have any needs for your, your business, they do photography and video and they have 360 videos, 360 tours and drones. And they're kind of your one stop shop for all of your photography needs. I highly recommend them. And if you go into their site and you put in the discount code Rick helps, they will give you 10 percent off. How cool is that? Rick, we used them yesterday for a new listing. Fabulous. Yeah, aren't they great? And did you get the pictures back yet? Yep. I got yeah. a link this morning. Yeah, and they, they they give you social media packages, everything. It's really great. I I like those people. They're fun. So I'm going to quickly go through some numbers here. And uh, um, and then uh, um, it's okay if you disagree with me when I, when I kind of give you my outlook for the rest of the year. Um, and because uh, that's what we do here. So... <laughs> <laughs> We're not all like-minded, but you might agree with me. So, but first thing I'm that, that keeps jumping out at me is the lack of new listings. This is new listings weekly, and that line just keeps going down. And without new listings, we still have listings growing in total, but we're kind of hanging 19,100 again today exactly like last week. And the reason is, look at our monthly sales volume. I mean, <laughs> if you've ever seen a number where something just fell off the map, this is it. This is year over year percentage change. So our sales in April were up 41.6% versus last year. And now we're down 77.7% .7 in sales. <clears throat> and that's what's driving the increase in available homes and listings. And that is, uh, um, I don't see that changing anytime soon. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and get, this is about as much of an economic wizard I can be. But here's here's what we're looking at here when we look at M2 money stock. And this is money that's out there, right, Pat? Just yep. in checking yep. accounts, um, just, you know, from all sources. And you can see that during the pandemic, we just flooded the United States with money. Now, this graph looks like this in every Western country and even China. And when the pandemic hit, we just flooded the market with money, either from the treasury or from monetary policy from the central bank. Now you can see it's starting to turn back here a little bit. But when I look at another chart, which is a percentage of money supply growth, it gets, this is where it gets interesting. You can see way over here again, that huge spike up, but this is a percentage here and they're pulling it back down. And the red line is inflation. So if we put it into historical perspective, we can go back here to the 70s, you can see that we had a spike in M2 again, and it hang, hung up out there for a long time, and it resulted in this high inflation rate of 14.7%. Now, what Chairman Powell has said is the mistake that was made back here was that they didn't clamp down early enough or hard enough to avoid this 14%. So what he's telling us now when he says pain is even though we see this little tiny downturn here, he's not going to get sucker punched. That inflation, he has to make sure that it's in line for a long enough time to be able to stop his hard money pullback here. And you can see that they're pulling back aggressively. And so this means that it's just not going to get better anytime soon. So they have to, the rate increases that we're seeing now looks to me like it's going to stick around. And as we get into our holiday seasons, which are always slow, November, December, you have to ask yourself, how much slower can it get? And that's uh, something I want to yak about a little bit later. But speaking of rates, Pat, <clears throat> what happened? <laughs> oh boy yeah it's been a it's been a staircase climb upward here here's rates this is actually the the rates on the 10-year 
Um, today we're having another bad day. It's down 39 bips basis points on the five-year coupon. They've been moving the, the coupons up. They for a target range, you go from four, four and a half. Now we're at five. So I mean, we got the tenure at 3.46. So it's just been, as you can see right here. Um, let me just I'll just zoom in here if I can. It has been just really just a staircase climb upward. Um, you know, from really about uh, end of July, beginning of August. It's just been this steady staircase climb upward. Now, I, so uh, it's not looking good. I mean, rates right now, I mean, I'm going to flip this over. As you can see here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this real quick. <clears throat> but I mean, um, I'm looking at, I pulled up rates and we're looking at 6% right here. Um, six and a quarter, six and an eighth is a cost of $1,300, even on our side. So you probably have some lenders probably quoting six and five eighths, six and three quarters on conventional out there, retail banks. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, you know, we, we talked a little bit offline that, you know, here the central bank's really trying to tighten things up. And uh, when it comes to housing and taking the jet fuel out of the housing market, I think they've they've done it. So, I mean, they could just hang right here and prices will march downward continually for the rest of the year. Um, mm -hmm. If we see, if I see this spike up, which is new listings, then I'm going to raise the red flag and cry uncle. But I think they're already, they've already done their job when it comes to housing. But the frustrating part is um, central bank can't do anything about food and fuel. That yeah. has to come from the treasury and it has to come from the administration. So you're seeing them kind of go after each other a little bit now. Uh, but it's uh, um, a weird little battle out there. And what are your buyers and sellers telling us, ladies? Ruby? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got lots to say. <laughs> well, you go ahead then. <laughs> you're up. <laughs> I got one under, one new build under contract and... Um, just out down in the pavement with others. So I had a, a, quite a few different buyers, but I literally had three buyers that had come to me in the last couple of weeks and, you know, they had their pre-approvals ready to go and we had a spike up again. So of course I told them, you need to speak with your lender. Let's see where we're at. If we need to make some adjustments, three of those, all of a sudden couldn't qualify for anything that we could realistically find here, you know, in the Valley. So they just immediately went on hold. It just completely knocked them out. I mean, they, I knew they were borderline when I was talking to them and sure enough, just by the jumping rates again and knock, knocked them out. And one of them was like devastated. I mean, she was super upset. I've got a couple other buyers. They're good to go. But what I am finding is that the buyers that are buying, it's out of necessity. Nobody's, nobody's put the same thing with the sellers. We've got quite a few seller leads that we're working right now. Every single client is out of necessity. It's either divorce, uh, death, and they have to sell the house, job transfers. There is they, like, I'm sorry. Some, there, well, there's some that are the older generation that are looking to move into like assisted living, that type of thing right. going on. Right. So every, and, and, and some flippers um, and investors getting rid of their homes. And I saw an article the other day, I think it was yesterday. Phoenix actually has, I believe it's 13.1%, the highest inflation in the nation right now. Yeah. And yeah. I have just in my entire 33 years, I have never seen a market manipulated like this one has been. It's crazy. At, at when oh. can we expect some relief or can we, is there, are we going to be, looking at this kind of uh, mortgage rate for the rest of the year? Or do you, what's Habib saying? When, he kind of thought things had pulled back by the beginning of 2023, didn't he? Uh, my crystal ball, I, I left it in the other room, but I'll just <laughs> do my best. Mine's in my truck. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, I'm serious. Though. I, I mean, broke mine. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I'm. it's kind of interesting on my end. He, Barry says that we're going to see the next couple months, some pressure on inflation because uh, he says through October, November, he says we're going to start to see, he believes that we're going to start to see some relief in rates beginning of next year. 
uh, for a second quarter of next year. He goes, we're still going to see this push upward. And, um, but he believes with uh, the feds, you know, the feds, you know, obviously their MBS purchases. Basically, they have said that there's no purchases out on the schedule on the Federal Reserve. I guess if you look at the schedule, there's no scheduled purchases, but they're just letting the runoff. They're still taking what's re reinvested. If somebody refinances or, buy, you know, pays it off, they use that for reinvesting. That's down. So he goes, he thinks that that's going to be muted, that whole MBS, uh, because the supply is down dramatically. That's going to be muted. But he really thinks that once you start comparing the quarter to quarter numbers or month to month numbers from last year on inflation, because we saw a push November, December, January, um, this coming up with things slowing down, you're going to see much more inflation, less inflationary pressures. And I think it's going to, you know, obviously put, give some relief to the rates. Um, but we're, yeah, it's we're just going to take for, a while. It's going to take a while. I mean, we're once again, remember, you know, we're talking about, you know, these periods, we're going through these periods. I think this is just a, a sloppy, tough period. And like uh, Jackie said, I think the people that are moving or doing something are just out of necessity. And remember, I have been talking, obviously, the other last 12 months or so, you and I have been talking about this interest rate lock-in as far as people are locked in a lower rate. And now we're starting to see these leading analysts. I saw two articles in the last couple of weeks, a couple of days, how these lead, leading analysts now are saying, oh, there's a, they call it the rate lockdown because so many people are, you know, they're, they're starting to realize that that is causing a constriction and restriction in supply. So, you know, in terms of the crash, I don't buy it, but I mean, we are definitely going to see, I think things are slowing down. There's no doubt about it. Uh, companies are pre-announcing their earnings. All the conditions are slowing. So, you know, but it's going to take probably four to six months for this to work out. Well, ladies, how do you see the end of the end of the year shaking out here? Cause I, when I look at these sales numbers, I just, I, how much lower can they get? <laughs> I, I've been saying this the last month. I think we're just going to be stagnant. I think we're just going to muddle along. Anything out of necessity will happen. Um, you know, it takes a buyer three, it takes buyers three months approximately anyways to kind of absorb the rates, get used to it, settle in. And, you know, I think we were starting to see that little uptick a little bit with some buyers coming back to the market and, you know, rates had come down. They were in the fours. I was saying, here's the time to buy. You know, we've got the inventory. The sellers are willing to negotiate. I'm seeing sellers get much more realistic now. And the agents are, you know, they're not just taking listings anymore to get a listing. They are being adamant. I'm seeing more and more of that, of them saying we've got a price realistic. Because, you know, you spend a lot of money when you take a listing up front, getting it ready for market. There's a lot of time, energy, and money invested. Yeah, and and it's, it's, I, I saw a comment, didn't even cut you off, saw a funny comment on Facebook group yesterday, which is a real estate one. This lady goes, mm -hmm. she goes, I don't know what to do. Um, I haven't had any showings in 45 days. And oh, you're overpriced. I'm I'm priced 40,000 below Redfin and Zillow. And I'm thinking, <laughs> well, there's your problem. You're using them for comps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No kidding. And you've got to look at when we just sat down and took a new listing the other day. And every client I'm talking with, potential seller right now, the, the sold comps are out the window. Even the sold comps from July, even the sold comps from August, they're out the window. You got to look at active, under contract, pending, and then go from there. So we've got one on uh, Moro that, you know, when we listed it, and, and I kind of pushed these girls because I, I saw things shift. And, like, and they were kind of taking their time. They needed to clear at the house. They inherited the home. And I'm like, we got to get on the market. We got to get on the market. And when we first looked at the market it, it had a 480 something value we priced it i thought appropriately mm -hmm. it's been on the market for what about 28 32 days something like that we had done one price adjustment and i had to have that hard hard conversation with them last week i'm like look here's the deal you have got to go down to bottom dollar that you are willing to take and you've got to be realistic we can't you know, we can't do this or it's going to hurt you longer and it hurts you more in the long run. So we dropped it down and we actually priced against the under contracts and pendings. This one has a pool and we typically an appraiser somewhere 10 to 16,000 on an adjustment for a pool. We took the pool adjustment out so that we would be very, very competitive. So now we're getting showings. Yeah, it's, we're if getting, you're not getting showings. It's price. It's always it's yeah. always price. There's 
there's only 2,600 <clears throat> people out there on a weekly basis that are writing contracts. And so you have to get their attention either with flares um, or price. And, and uh, I did a video Tuesday where I was talking about if you're out there looking for a foreclosure, there aren't any. But if you're right. looking for foreclosure pricing, look at Open Door. Yeah. Because yeah. they have, they, the dynamics are the same. In other words, a bank, when they get a house, they have to move it, right? So they have to keep pricing it until it gets sold. Yeah. Open Door, they have to move these homes unless they plan on converting to a property management company. So they have to move this inventory. And they have 1,600 of them. They have no choice but to keep lowering the price until they move. Yeah. And uh, I'm hearing some stories on the street, too, that are saying that they're pulling this. some of these guys. And uh, I don't know which one it was. They, But you're sending in an offer and they reach out to you and say, give us your highest and best. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I saw offers. that, too. They don't. They don't have right. multiple offers. And the same thing with the new builds. And Ruby's been coming across a lot of good deals with new builds, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the builders are they got a lot of inventory homes out there. And and unfortunately, that's a good inventory from people that couldn't qualify after they'd been under contract for six, seven, eight, nine months or more. Yeah, that's really a tough situation. Mm -hmm. I had, had a viewer reach out and say, you know, can you talk about delinquencies and foreclosures? And I always kind of have the same answer and go, yeah, there aren't any. Um, yeah. this, is, this is a serious delinquency rate. And the reason that it went up was because of the moratorium. So if you're more right. than 90 days behind, it's not reported to the credit agency. They started doing that, but then they then they stopped. But, uh, and then here is actual, this is mortgage delinquencies and foreclosures by period. So you can see here that 30 and 60 day late are the blue line and 90 day is the yellow. And then this is number in foreclosure and that number's very low, but the one to watch is how many of these 90 day um, delinquencies are growing. And that's where you're hearing things now saying that we have more delinquencies now than we did in 2007, <clears throat> which is true, but we still have some of them under the forbearance plan and it's going to count as a delinquency, but they have so much equity, they're not handing them back to the bank. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the interesting things I'm seeing is the rents. Rentals are growing and I'm seeing rent prices dropping. Yeah, the rent uh, growth, according to the Cromford report today, um, said that it's, uh, um, you know, we're starting to see, let's see, over the past four weeks, seen a flood of new listings with 66% more being added to the MLS. Now, if they're adding them to the multiple listing service, that means that they've had a hard time just posting them on Zillow or putting them on rental.com. So they're trying to get as many eyeballs on their rentals as they can. So there's going to be rental relief by the time uh, we get to the middle of 2023. So, um, uh -huh. you know, poor people that signed on to a one-year lease in April are going to be kicking themselves, but they'll get some relief. You're not going to get that $200 increase you've been facing every time, or in some cases, $400. So, um, but they're still high. So, you know, not increasing is good news, but when you're still way up there in the stratosphere, it's, uh, you know, it's not as comforting as we like it to be. I think um, things are going to look very bleak by Christmas. And by, say, bleak, sales are going to be, <clears throat> we're at 2,600 now. I wouldn't be surprised. And I say that as a seven-day moving average. I wouldn't be surprised to see us below 2,000 for about six weeks. And yeah, that means, I agree. That means nobody's working. I mean, the title companies are going to be panicking. Uh, lenders are going to, you know, they're going to be laying them off. Realtors are going to get out of the business and home prices are going to come down until that new listing number turns around and spikes up. Home prices are not going to fall off a cliff. They're just mm -hmm. going to continue to take their, their slow time marching, marching down after December, uh, is anybody's guess, but I think it, um, to Chairman Powell's point, he was talking about inflation. He said, sometimes it ends up being a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy, especially for small businesses, because as businesses, if they think inflation's here for the long term, they're going to start pricing accordingly and actually making inflation worse. Right. If people see house prices coming down consistently and sales dropping off, then they're going to be 
panicking and lowering their prices even more. And I'm hoping by the end of the year that um, open door is out of the picture and that that washes out. <laughs> I, they don't really affect the market that much, but with 1,600 homes, they can. 100% right. of the market almost right now. Yeah. To me, that's a big effect. And it's I'm seeing it have an effect on certain price points in specific areas, you know, especially in that anywhere from three to 500,000 range. They're, effect, they're having an effect on neighborhoods in certain areas. Yeah, and that's what I call them the new foreclosure. So, <laughs> I mean, there, I, I'm looking at some of those listings. I mean, I just went through a couple examples. You know, you and I, Rick, we shared it last week, and it was just, it was crazy. They're buying stuff at 540, putting it on the market for 565, 570. You know, and then you look at the days on market, it's like 70, 80, 90 days, and they're going from 565, 65 down to say 480, you know, 475. They're just dropping stuff, 65, 70 thousand dollars, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, how aggressive are they going to get so they can get them off the books by the end of the year? That's the thing to watch because they're, I, you know, I'm sure they got their investors out there saying we don't want to be screwing around with this in January. You know, get get this done and improve your earnings now. <laughs> you know what kills me though? Four or five months ago, I remember sending in offers and not even getting responses from them. And right. some of those same homes are still on the market with price reductions. Why didn't you take our offers four or five months ago? I think they were just overwhelmed. Um, I think, you know, they didn't ramp up in staffing. Um, and then speaking with the, the agent that I'm going to close on next week in an open door house, uh, going to meet Tyler at the house today. Um, she said they're flooded. They're just they're because everybody's trying to lowball these offers. So they're getting all these offers coming in. Mm -hmm. They responded to me the very next day, um, but with a phone call. And okay. they're and they've been really good as far as getting through the transaction. Now, maybe I'm just lucky, uh, but the past couple that I've had with them have been have been good. But uh, she did say that they're they're overwhelmed. Um, you know. Well, I know a lot of agents and buyers, they are specifically looking for those homes because they know they got so much leverage to come in and make low ball offers. And why not? Yeah. And see, now when you're on the receiving end of that, you're overwhelmed. Right. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. 50,000 below, 40,000 below. And uh, and I say you can in anything over 400,000. Now, somebody asked me if they thought 30,000 to 40,000 below asking was a low ball offer. And my answer was um, not if it's been on the market more than 30 days, but nobody is going to entertain your offer of 30 to 40,000 below in that four to 500,000 range. Right. Um, if they've only been on the market a week, they're just right. not, they're going right. to go, I'm going to wait and see what happens on the weekend. Well, after four weekends of saying that they're going to say, let's talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's the market that we're in. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I think uh, um, I'm, I'm uh, the psychology's definitely changed. It has, it has, and it's going to drive prices down. So I, I know I sound pessimistic, but I'm trying to be as realistic as I can as, as the closer that we get to the beginning or to the end of the year, it's going to be slow. And if you're in a position where you uh, can buy and you want to buy, um, you'll, you'll find some opportunities pick up out there, but um, you know, rates are not going to give us any relief. We're not going to get a, a decrease for Christmas. And I don't see the central bank pivoting at all. They're not going to give one rat's patoot about the election. He's got a job to do. He said he's going to plow through. He said he's going to cause some pain. He's not backing off because there's an election. So I think it's going to be a very interesting end of the year to watch. And if you want to stay on top of the numbers, we'll yeah, do next, it week's here. next week's going to be interesting with this, you know, the feds coming out, see what they say. They might, you know, they might bump it up a point. 100, 100 basis points. Yeah, you think, think they'll it, go 100, huh? I, you know, I haven't seen it, but, you know, there's definitely 75. But I, I would put, I would be a betting man to say they might go 100. I think the market's ready for it. Yep. Let's see what happens. So, okay, so all right, folks, yeah. well, we will see you back on the channel here next week. All right. Have a good week. See Take ya. Bye-bye.